I, uh, I, I think the, the moment, uh, the word I would choose is pregnant. This is a pregnant moment <laughs> for America uh, in, the, uh, in the sense of uh, we don't know what's going to happen. Pregnant with possibilities. Uh, we've got the, uh, uh, the obvious Tea Party in the right wing. The, uh, they, they've gone from conservative to right wing to now crackpots uh, basically uh, being uh, the, the heart of their party. Uh, and then we've got the Democrats, uh, who are weaker than Canadian hot sauce, you know, when it comes to standing up uh, for what needs to be done. So the, my point of all this, and I'm sure you're wondering what it is, is that, uh, that we're at a moment in which we matter more than ever before, we being just ordinary folks uh, in this country. Uh, the future is not about the Tea Party. Uh, the future is not about Obama, and it's not about the Democrats uh, in Congress. Uh, the future is back to us, uh, as it always comes uh, back. Who are we going to be? And we have been way too quiet on the progressive side, way too obedient, uh, way too go along. Uh, you know, Mark Twain said, loyalty to the country always, loyalty to the government when it deserves it. Uh, it doesn't deserve it, uh, and we have to face up to that. Uh, and that means we've got to be uh, in their face, uh, whether that's uh, on the internet or, uh, or in person. Uh, we've got to be in the face of power again, uh, and to assert uh, in, in as bold a way as we can uh, the values that the progressives really derive our strength, and that's economic fairness, social justice, equal opportunity for all people. And we need to begin to assert that. Again, there was a guy in Vermont a few years ago who ran for the Senate. Uh, a guy from Massachusetts had moved to Vermont, a multimillionaire, saying, I'm ready to be uh, your senator, and he was going to uh, win the Republican uh, nomination for Senate. And this guy was named Fred, uh, and he was a, a farmer, dairy farmer. Uh, and Fred uh, filed to run against him just because he was a son of a bitch from Massachusetts who was coming in to buy the election. Uh, and Fred had no money. He did have a nickel a plate fundraiser at his farm, uh, but he campaigned on a manure spreader. Uh, and he had the greatest bumper sticker ever. It said, spread Fred. Uh, and that's what I think we need to be doing, <laughs> spreading Fred. <laughs> uh, is there an anti-populist uh, answer in the room for that? Um, Chris, let's hear um, where you <laughs> Chris is punished for being late here. Go ahead. Um, well, I, uh, I like populism as much as the next uh, rabble rouser. Um, I thought I, you were going to say as much as the next elitist. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, I, I like populism as much as the next uh, Beltway, uh, Beltway elite. But I, I think that um, I actually do think that there is a... You know, there's obviously something somewhat ominous about the form that populism is taking right now. I think everyone would agree um, that dis distrust of elites uh, and skepticism of their motives and their competence is, on the whole, uh, salutary uh, for, for a democracy, but um, a kind of nihilistic landscape in which every pillar of trust has been leveled is destructive. And I, I worry that, the, 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 to me, the overriding sort of salient feature of the moment that we're in right now is, is that it seems that we're sort of hurtling towards the latter. Um, when you look at something as simple as public opinion in the United States about climate change, belief in climate change has been dropping precipitously, worryingly. And I think that... In inverse proportion to the temperature. Exactly. In inverse, exactly. Those, those graphs go like this. It's like a big... Mm -hmm. And I think that um, that's, that's one of the places where the rubber hits the road on exactly this dynamic, which is to say everybody in, the, everybody in, in this room and everybody, I think, in the country probably can um, tell that we're in a bad economic state. I mean, everybody knows someone that's unemployed, is unemployed. But certain public policy pro problems require some set of experts to mediate. Climate change is one of them. No, no one is equipped with the perceptual capabilities to uh, feel the, the, the rise in global average temperatures, right? We have to sort of outsource that to someone that says, well, look, we've done this research. And, and those bonds that hold together the social contract in which we can have confidence in the judgments of some group of people that say, the planet is melting, we need to do something. Those bonds have been loosed. And I, I worry tremendously about that 
trend, which to me is the flip side of a lot of populism that's happening that I think is very positive and all to the good. And the question is how do we kind of negotiate that sort of be between those two, those two poles of kind of an unhealthy sort of authoritarian acceptance of what the people in power tell us is right for us on the one hand and a kind of total social refusal to listen to any expertise whatsoever.